once I told Neville I would do this, uh, I said, I'm not going to take it too serious. Uh, I'm going to have fun. My playing days are over. Yeah, wins and losses are important. But I found that uh, with each day, the stress has been building. Now I want to go 11 and 0. We got one returning starter, and I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. I would, I would love to win every game. Uh, let me make a slight correction. That was the media in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where Oak Grove is. Uh, Brett Favre with his comments about being their new offensive coordinator. So, Hugh, I'll start with you. Would you let Brett Favre coach your team? I would definitely have a problem with Brett Favre coaching my team. You look at Neville, Neville Barr, the coach that's there now. He had a pretty decent record. He went out of 10 years. He went to nine playoffs. But when you have a guy like Brett Favre taking over, you told him he's having fun. They're kind of greasing the skids getting you out of there because he's a, he's a larger than life personality oh, wow. and he is going to come in there and it's going to be all about him. Like I just said, this man has a pretty impressive resume, but now you got a guy like Brett Favre coming in, fresh blood. The kids are going to rally around him. There's going to be times in that game where you're, the, the coach yeah. is going to want to run one play and Brett Favre is going to say, no, nah, we're not going to do that. And who do you think those kids are going to listen to? The guy that's been playing in the NFL for 20 years. That's why I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want him hanging over my shoulder. Well, it sounded like Brett was already talking like he was the head that's, coach. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. Right? Yeah. What do you think, Stephen A.? I think it's much ado about nothing. Um, Brett Favre, we don't know if he's going to show up to work every day. We certainly don't know if he's going to show no. up one time. Uh, I, don't think it's a, I don't think there's a need to jump the gun world. here. I mean, you know, coaching, co coaching high school football is going to require a commitment because you're dealing with kids here. You have to be a, con a you know, you have to have continuity. You have to be a constant presence in their lives. More times than not, you've got to be a presence in their life on, on, off the field as well as on the field. I certainly that believe that the wisdom that he brings to the table, his football knowledge, uh, just him being a man, because I do think that Brett Favre is a decent man and who can't love kids, I definitely think that there's a lot that he can add to it. It's a plus. I don't see any minuses involved. But I do question whether at this stage of Brett Favre's uh, life, on, if he's Steve. interested in being committed it, to anything day in, day out. But this is the point that you're, you're losing in this whole argument. It's Brett Favre. This guy played for 20 years. Half of those kids probably still got his picture on, the wall, on his wall. He can Especially come into in work. Area. <laughs> if, he, if he comes to practice, if practice starts at 115 and he decides to come at 215, whatever he has to say, they're going to listen to because they grew up watching this guy. They know what he brings to the table. They know what he's accomplished in the NFL. They're going to listen to so what everything am I missing? he has to say. So, but, but what am I missing? Because I don't recall disputing that. No, you just said he's not going to show up to work on time and he's not going to do this and that. It doesn't I said, matter. I said, he's going to be there. I don't know there. if he's going to. I don't know if he's going to be there every day. If, he, if he's not going to be there every day. day, what I'm trying to say, if he's I don't not think it's a every... detrimental presence, though. No, but what I'm saying is, yes, it is That's when what you're I'm the saying. head coach and you're putting in all those hours and, you, and you're the guy that you're trying to get these kids to listen to, and then you got another guy coming in on Friday night right before the game taking over and undermining everything that you're doing. I mean, that's a problem. That goes against everything that you're what trying to teach these young men. What if, he, what if he's co-signing on everything the coach is doing? Do you really and think he's getting Brett the players Favre, to listen to? Do you really think Brett Favre is going to co-sign on everything the head coach has to say? He barely mentioned him, and no, we were talking I think about the offense. He said he wanted to go 11 and But I believe. Yeah, that's okay, fine. Okay, you had lost words again. now, huh? You ain't got nothing to say. Huh? No. Actually, no. You're, inter you're interrupting See, me continuously, but that's okay. I'm on the road so you can get away with that. Why, why, You'll pay the end. price you, on I, that I, when I, I get it. back in Just, studio. Why, why, when I get back in studio. The point I that I'm trying to make is. I have something I really want to say here. All I'm saying is. Wait a second. Ahead, Am I ahead. supposed to talk to that camera or to virtual Stephen A or to you? I don't know. Or to Jamel. I'll talk to my camera here. This is for Stephen A. Smith. You know what struck me watching that video of Brett Favre? He looked really good. Oh, don't start. He, oh, he don't looked, start. He don't looked start. in shockingly good shape. Most guys, you know, the Hugh Douglases might be out for a year or two, and they don't look right, quite like they were. Hold up, Skip. I okay. still can fit right, my look at this. pants. Look at this. I look at this. My pants. Look at this. So I, I'm just throwing it out. If, if I'm the Vikings or the Jaguars, oh. you know, I'm thinking I might, I might look at that video. I might sit back and say, I think it's time to get Brad Hall. I mean, seriously, right Can now, I address would Jacksonville. That? Can I would, address that point? Well, wait, wait a second. Would Jacksonville be point? better off with Blaine Gabbert or Brett Favre today, right now? Would the Vikings be time better out. off with time Christian out. Ponder or Brett Favre? Time out. I'm just asking. Time out. I've noticed the whole, I've noticed the whole, uh, a tinge of hypocrisy in your words. 
Skip Bayless is the one that told me the reason why Brett Favre was awful his very last year in Minnesota is because he came into training camp. Once he came into training camp late after he decided he wanted to come when he wanted to come. And then he <laughs> learned that Sidney Rice was going to be out with hip surgery. There you that go. Brett Favre wasn't interested yeah, in playing. Go on. So if that's the case, go on. Why, if that's the case, why should he go to Minnesota or Jacksonville now when those teams are awful? Because I tried to explain to you, he got bounty bowled. He took one of the most unholy beatings in that NFC championship game I have ever seen a quarterback take. He was beat up going into the next year. He wanted to take a year off just to heal his body. And he said, well, if they're going to pay me whatever they're going to pay me, I might Skip. as well go up there and play. And he Skip, tried I have to another play. question. I have another question. I have another question, Skip. Are you trying to say there really was a bounty gate? Well, I, something was going on. They were trying to kill him, it looked like to me. Oh, yeah. Which one is it, Skip? There, I'm just picking apart. One, no. one minute. No, one we're minute not going to change no the subject game. here. Another minute all he's I know, not playing with a good team. You know, all, and, and all here I, know I am. Is I just pick apart your words, shots Skip, in that game. Words. I have no idea no, why, but oh, he took shots. Okay. They said he couldn't oh, get up off the side table after the game. He's quarterback. He's supposed to take So, in other words, it's Bounty Gate. Hold on, y'all. It's on the words. In other words, it's Bounty Gate when you want to make the point that Brett Favre suffered. I, but then when you're asked the question as to whether or not there's bounty gate, well, you don't know. All, you all I know is that a check you're, you're funny. You're funny. All I know is okay. that the defensive coordinator gave a speech before the game in which what was the whole idea of you? You got to kill the head to kill the you're body? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all I know. Well, that's all I know that happened now, in that that's game. That's all you know. So, okay. so here's the point. Now, I, got you. I, got you. I was on record before the draft. I said Christian Ponder way over. Blaine Gabbert, way overrated, taking him way too high. Today, right now, would Brett Favre, a freak of nature, not be better than those two young players at this point in their career? I say so? yes, he would. Sorry. So? I'm We're not talking about there. Brett Favre's capabilities. We're talking about how much, how much a, a dissension he could cause because of his, his lack of a commitment. He doesn't need to be there. Doesn't need to be there. I mean, do you want to win or not? That's, that's all I have. I, I think I want to win you're football not winning, games. You're not winning in Minnesota or Jacksonville with Brett Favre. You're not winning there either. You might be shocked. He could go on a contender and help you. He's not going to win with some mediocre team.